thank you for taking the time to do this. First things first, it is a pleasure on my end. How's your day going so far? It's going well. How's your day going, Carl? <laughs> it's going okay. It's going okay. Bit of a still suffering a Rock bit of a hangover. Just been, just been at Bloodstock. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so fantastic. Still... Yeah, yeah. Where's that Bloodstock? Is that in the United Kingdom? Yeah, that's in uh it's uh, yeah. near Derbyshire. Okay, cool. Yeah. So cool. big festival that just took place over the weekend, came back yesterday. But um yeah, still nice. getting there, getting ahead together. Happy to be doing this, happy to be back in the swing of normal things, basically, and speaking mm. to you, which I guess we'll start off very, very simply here, really. Tell us a little bit about yourself in particular in regards to your musical background and how you got to where you are right now with the Cassini Project. Um, yeah, so uh, I sort of started the Cassini Project as a, a solo uh, mission um, after a couple of bands that set up. Like, So um, I kind of got frustrated with musicians like either not being committed enough or they didn't really want to make prog rock. So um, I just thought, well, you know, you got people like Trent Reznor or um, uh, what's the the guy out of Porcupine Tree, Steve Wilson. Oh, yeah. So I thought if they if they can do it, you know, why can't I? So I just decided to sort of start my own one man band and went ahead with that. Um, I kind of wanted it to be sort of guitar focused, you know, like guitar solos, um, guitar harmonization, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um yeah kind of almost like a reaction against um the garage rock revival at the time um and the sort of media establishment which emphasized kind of simplicity um i was kind of thinking you know what no i'm gonna go completely over the top with intricacy and you know make it as self-indulgent as possible you know <laughs> kind of like the mars volta i was listening to mars volta a lot around that time and you know they'd have like 12 minute songs and i thought you know that, that's kind of cool because there's a sort of freedom in that that you're not constricted by you know oh what does this person think of it or what is that person it's like they're just expressing themselves yes without rules and i think um that's what i wanted to do so <laughs> yeah is it fair to say then you were basically focusing on making music for yourself very much so yeah that's right um yeah it's I think most artists would make music for themselves, <laughs> you know, um, some, some make it with an audience in mind. Like uh, I can't really speak for them, but um, I'd be willing to to bet that like, you know, artists do that. Like, you know, they write for themselves first and then an audience second, but you know, could be open to correction. No, no, I think you're absolutely right. The idea is hopefully the, uh, what you create will bring the audiences in, but did you have yeah. um, early ambitions? What was your, early sort of process thoughts in regards to sharing and getting that out to an audience and how they might react to as you say uh an eclectic and wild imagination that you do have um well I, yeah i guess like um what i kind of wanted to do at the time was um sort of like it was almost like there was an element of humor to it like so some some of the songs like in the early days were kind of just written as vehicles for extended guitar solos yeah. so then like you know bands like um dragon force were at the time and i was like ah these guys are kind of on my wavelength here because like you know they have maybe like two minutes of a song it's like right now solo for like five minutes <laughs> and that that was the bit they're waiting to get to like oh yeah we have to do the song like just get to the solo um so that, that that was kind of my approach at the beginning a little bit. Um, then I kind of went against guitar solos. I kind of got bored of them. So I thought, okay, I don't want to do guitar solos so much. Um, so, I mean, I, I wasn't really, like, I, I was kind of influenced more by like the bands I was listening to. Like, you know, if they inspired me, I kind of wanted to emulate them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, like Opeth um, at the time, that was 2008, 2009. Um, then other bands like, um, you know, Sometimes I might, sometimes I actually couldn't control what I was writing. So like, you know, I, I might intend to write like a heavy metal song and then I end up writing a ballad instead. And that's the idea that came to me and that's what would be put out there. Um, so <clears throat> as regards like, yeah, that, uh, that, that, uh, as regards audiences, um, I wasn't really thinking, okay, what can I do to write for this particular audience in mind? It was more like just, you know, in my own world a bit, like, and that's, you know where it was taking me you know whatever i was getting interested in and as an audience i mean as an audience did sort of come in and people did start to pay attention and listen and find out what you're doing did you did, have you found it developed or changed the way you're making music over the years um that's a good question uh so like um i did a cover version of um, a theme uh for uh anime called berserk 
Uh Um, it's the theme for this particular character called Guts and it's a really beautiful piece of music but that did bring in an audience and um, I was kind of thinking like if if, yeah sometimes like you're kind of thinking um, is it more worthwhile doing a kind of interpretation of of like a, a theme tune or a, a piece of anime music or you know writing my own material so there is that consideration to make hmm. um i think like i probably would have reacted to, to like yeah there, there's some people who, like would listen to some of my songs um uh, and like i mean i went through a phase around 2012 to 2016 where i was trying to make as much grandiose music as possible like you know big epic songs and uh I think at the time one person sort of said, you know, these songs are too long. Okay. And she was she was totally right. Like I was just thinking, because now it's like when I was back, it's like, oh god, that's so boring. Like, you know, oh. it just goes on too long. So now it's like um I've gone in the opposite direction a bit. I don't want to write long songs. So yeah, it, it is true. Like, you know, you get feedback from people, and at the time you might think, Oh no, you're totally wrong. You don't get it, man. Like, you know what I mean? And then, you know, it turns out, oh, actually they had they had a good point there, you know. <laughs> and then um you you adapt and you change a little bit. I suppose that's like the craft, you know. Well, yeah, it's the craft. Yeah. I think something, you know, it comes with age, it comes with knowledge, it comes with experience, all of those things yeah. one, and that's how you get there. Yeah, that's right. Do you, your, your, your influences, the stuff you developed from and the stuff that you particularly wanted to perhaps emulate to begin with before you kind of mm. developed what you were doing, aside mm. from the sort of the musical side of things, the, the rock, the metal, the pop, the whatever it might be, the, mm. you find yourself influenced by things like film soundtracks, scores, video game music mm. and things like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean... um it's very good that you mentioned film soundtracks. It's the one thing I actually didn't remember uh, to say. Like, yeah, film soundtracks can sometimes be more inspiring than, you know, popular music. You know, like, uh, I'm just trying to think, was there, there, there were uh, actual film soundtracks that did influence me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm just trying to think who, uh, I suppose, like, uh, I'm getting the mental block here. Dan- Danny Elfman a bit. Like, I remember oh, yeah. I actually did write one yeah i wrote one song and i actually just realized oh that does sound an awful lot like danny elfman (laughs) i mean so uh unintentionally actually but you know that was a subliminal influence um you know i really like the soundtracks of the batman films um and uh um oh elmer bernstein he he wrote the the soundtrack to ghostbusters and the film heavy metal which is a riot (laughs) and um have you seen that film heavy metal (laughs) Uh, no, I don't think I don't think so. It, it, I like it's, I it's on it. net. It's on Netflix, and it's definitely of its time. It's like an animated kind of uh, uh, film with kind of heavy metal in it and kind of escapist. It, okay. It's it's quite funny. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Elmer Bernstein, and uh, I'm just trying to think who wrote the score to 2001: Space Odyssey, or was it? Yeah, hmm. can't remember. But um, oh. maybe Basil Pulduris. He wrote the uh the music to um robocop and total recall so yeah those, those kind of um composers did influence me I, yeah definitely you kind of find yourself yeah. leaning towards more towards science fiction aspects yeah 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 i mean um yeah science fiction is one of my favorite genres of uh yeah literature and you know film so do you think yeah that's what you know so you think you know, you're at this sort of stage where all those influences do create this beautiful melting pot where it's less about um, trying to find an inspiration and more just putting it all together. It comes through quite clearly into what you want to do. Um, Yeah, I think so. Like, I think um, it's, it's really hard to define the creative process sometimes because it's like, it kind of comes to you like in a subconscious way almost mm. like, and yeah, you're right. Like there's all these kind of things that are swimming around in the back of your mind you may not be aware of maybe until later you kind of reflect and think, Oh, you know, that sounds like this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever. Um, Yeah. So it would be a melting pot. It's just that you may not necessarily be aware of it at the time. Sometimes you are aware of it as well. Like sometimes you think, okay, I'm into this and I'm also into that over there. And maybe if I combine the two, uh, I'll get something new or something different. So. And I imagine as well, I'd imagine there's an almost an element um, to your style that is you you're you're not necessarily able to define it, but someone that listens to it points it to you and says, "Oh, it kind of reminds me," or, or "I feel familiar to this." Sort yeah. of thing. And you get that from it. 
Yeah, that, that's kind of funny, actually, that you mentioned that, because um, when I was recording uh, my album, Blue Ocean event, in the studio, uh, the studio engineer, he's like saying, oh, that sounds like Rush. And then he'd say, <laughs> oh, that also sounds like Rush. And that's what Geddy Lee would write on the bass. And the funny thing is, I don't listen to Rush. So, I mean, no offense to Rush, like they're a great band and everything, but I'm just, I just don't listen to their music that much. Um, he also said, oh, that sounds like, uh, what, what was interesting as well, he said, he said oh, that sounds like blink 182 like the rhythm section to one of the songs i think it's hell's a place in mexico yeah um and that's funny that he mentioned that because it did grow up in the era of pop punk which i did not ever listen to at the time when i was a teenager I was like, oh I, I don't listen to that i listen to that definitely like, but that was having an influence on me when i was growing up and it obviously like you know it's stuck as well um so yeah i mean I, I think sometimes do you, I consciously do like I mean there, there's it's kind of like everything you know so I would sometimes write songs more subconsciously than consciously but then sometimes I also write songs consciously so um L lightning tesla is one of the songs off of it and I kind of wanted that to be like um death I was listening to sounds of perseverance and I just liked all the complexity and the the random curveballs that were being thrown in the songs like oh we're going into a new section now and mm -hmm. why because we can and um i wanted to take that approach with lightning tesla so that was a really intentional sort of song where i was deliberately writing it in a particular way yeah and how much um how much of it has covid the last couple of years the lockdowns the inability to well, well i guess for the music industry really kind of grind into a halt how much of an effect did that have on what you were doing I think that was um, useful because uh, what happened was um, I had a lot more time to kind of rehearse for my album, uh, Blue Ocean Events. So um, and, and actually that the, I think the last recording session for that, I was doing them. I think it was three songs. Could have been four. But that song in particular, Lightning Test, is extremely yep. difficult for me to play. So, okay. um, so basically like, it it really helped to have all that time to practice it because um it, like it's just it was written kind of to be as technical as it could be as well um so like i needed the time to do that um so that, so it was beneficial and useful in that way um the other the other way it was useful I had some time to write songs you know so i wrote some uh some songs which are on another album that um i've sort of potentially finished recording i might add a little bit more to it but it's more or less sort of done okay uh, that album is grass messiah that that would be released maybe in a year or two mm. um but you know covid it opens up a lot of time to experiment as well like i mean you know with the uh the cover versions that i do on youtube um you know i had the freedom of time to do those and to make the videos for them um so yeah it's just a matter of time you know it's a common it's a common thing that kind of comes from bands and artists that we've spoken to over the past few years about having extra time whether it be to perfect an album or a release or an ep and just being able to take a breath it's a rare event uh one hopefully mm. never to be repeated uh but any benefits that can be taken from it well we should we should scream about them from the top of a mountain mm. yeah I think Shakespeare wrote Othello during a plague, I think. It was a lockdown. I think, I'm not sure if it was Othello, but it was one of the plays. I read that somewhere a couple of years uh, ago. So. If that's, that's, <laughs> that's the case, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Blue Ocean Event, that's the latest release. Mm. Yes. So talk to us about that. What did the early sort of, what did the early goals look like? And did it turn out exactly as you wanted it to, uh, to match up to what the current product is? yeah good question um i sort of intended it to be like the best reflection of my music it could possibly be um so i picked the strongest songs i kind of I, I like i obviously want to kind of uh emulate the bends by radiohead even though it sounds nothing like the bends by radiohead i just like the, the consistency on that album so i thought okay i'll pick my very best songs and kind of put it onto this and I suppose the theme is kind of related to the title. So the title of the album refers to the melting of the polar ice caps, which causes an entirely blue ocean event or blue ocean earth, I should say. And that has catastrophic environmental consequences that should be happening in the next 10 years. So uh, basically um, the album is sort of a lot. The lyrical themes are focused on doom, destruction, end of humanity, um, misanthropy, um, uh, those kind of things but there's some like lighter hearted songs or lighthearted songs uh 
well, not lighthearted, but sort of they're not they're not like saying the whole world's gonna end and we're all gonna die. Like, you know, um, so um, you know, like I think neurotic insomniac is is essentially about a dream I had uh of the song, which is how I wrote it. And oh. it was meant to be, yeah, the, the weird thing it was like it was a Portis head song from a parallel universe. <laughs> I thought, oh, that that's someone else's song until I woke up and realized, no, I wrote it. It's no I because I checked. All right, I checked it and it, they did not write it. So <laughs> um so the idea is like, you know, if you go into a kind of sleep state, maybe your mind's traveling to across the multiverse and you're getting ideas from different universes where things happen differently um that that's the idea i don't actually believe that but um yeah, that, that was the concept so like you know that that's not a song about the end of the world you know <laughs> whereas um yeah uh let's see exile is kind of about that it's like a climate refugee just escaping where they come from like mm. and the whole world is collapsing around them and that kind of thing um what else let's see doom and gloom I suppose fight to the end is about violent revolution and collapse so you know the end of everything these songs are yeah these songs are pretty uh like I, I wanted to keep that i wanted it to be intense you know like um mm. that kind of thing um but it's real as well i mean it, it is yeah. it's it, you know the doom and gloom as you put it we only need to look out your window these days it's all very real yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah um yeah exactly i mean i suppose musically it was kind of trying to you know just uh, what i like to do is kind of i suppose like it's to go back to your question about like you know do, do i write do, do the audience influence how i write and actually i think you know the lady doth protest too much like yes they do in the respect that if i'm writing a song i like to actually just do something that isn't expected or isn't conforming to what it's the way things should be you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i might just throw in a completely random section that you know conventionally shouldn't be in the song but i'll do it because you're not supposed to do it you know what i mean like there's a certain element of like you know if if, if people are expecting this i'm not going to do that you know what i mean i'm going to do the opposite um so sort of thinking back to lightning tesla because that's really what that song is about just trying to do things that were unexpected throughout the whole thing like there's no real verse chorus verse structure structure in that song at all there's no vocals because i thought vocals are kind of popular so i won't do that yeah and um if there was the guitar solos that, like you know oh so you know you, you one might expect me to play a shreddy solo but instead i'll just do this really long sustained blues bend but i'm actually not going to play a blues solo no no i'm going to start shredding you know so it's just trying to continuously throw curveballs because i find like when i was listening to like the mars volta or yep. even hangar is it hangar 13 by megadeth or hangar yep. 18 yeah 18. what 13 or 18 i 18. just got 18 yeah it's hangar 18 yeah there's like you hear the song and then suddenly it just goes into a completely different section with this with the solo and it's like where did that come from and that's awesome because it's unexpected it's not conventional it's just like whoa you know do you think, because yeah. you brought it up a couple of times, do you think Lightning Tesla, Tesla is a great, is the best example possibly of not necessarily your best work, but your where your imagination, where your head often is at? Mm. Very interesting. Um, hmm. Just trying to think of all the songs on that album. Like, um, Let me have a look for my album for a second. <laughs> I mean, you've got 12 tracks, gonna... there, so it's a busy one yeah definitely um yeah i mean hmm i think road wave might be better okay yeah i think road wave because road wave is kind of like lightning tesla in the sense that it does have a lot of sections um but i think musically uh it's just it's just there's just more to it it's a little bit more kind of um uh, melodic and yeah i just i think it's just a better song like you know lightning test is more like a tech demo almost you no, know, as well no. yeah yeah <laughs> i get what you mean yeah. i get what you mean so is the rest is the current plan then for as we're at august 2022 the remainder of 2022 is it just to kind of go back to what you were saying earlier on perfect and do the little nuances you want on this new record oh Yes, well, the new record, right? Um, that's an interesting one because it's it's a little bit heavier, a little bit deeper, a little bit slower. Not as much um, showing off on this one. Um, so it, it it it's similar, but it's also different because it's it's more um, 
it's more uh what would be the word seasoned i suppose or okay. you know what i mean i know what i'm doing a bit more yep. you know what i mean um because like when i was doing blue ocean event like mm. i'd been about 15 years since i'd been in the studio and like it was experimental because the way like my songs are constructed there's so many layers that i didn't really know how it was going to work initially so um it it did work eventually because i had i had uh, a, a process where you could record all these parts really quickly mm. by just memorizing them so with that in mind the new album like you know that that process was nailed down so like yeah i think that's reflected in the actual recording itself it just sounds a little bit better using okay. better instruments as well and yeah mm. so i think i think overall it's just it, it's a pretty damn good album like uh, in my opinion <laughs> the new one i'm glad like grass, I'm... grass messiah but yeah blue ocean event is also good <laughs> yeah absolutely i'm glad you put it in there that is uh, it's amazing to hear i can't wait to to hear it um what other goals or plans do you kind of have in the works for the next sort of six to 12 months uh, yeah i'd like to well well I have this um I want to make some music videos for the new album. Mm -hmm. Um I have some music video ideas so I'll be collaborating hopefully with a director on a video for one of them. Um that song is called Cold Blood. Mm -hmm. Um the other thing would be um potentially to to be playing live so um sort of trying to get a band together and um yeah, do some live shows, you know. Um, because I think live music is is cool, even though it's not as popular. Like people are talking about the internet being, you know, your social media accounts being the be all and end all. Um, that might be true, but I still think, you know, what's rock and roll? Rock and roll is like playing a gig, people being there, having a good time, not worrying about your social media metrics. That's not rock and roll, you know. So, <laughs> no, absolutely, it is. Yeah. Well, it is a, always going to be a unique experience. As I said to you at the start, I've been just mm -hmm. come back from Bloodstock. Uh, and sharing a field with 20,000 other people in regards to live music. I know the importance mm. of it. Um, how, mm. how 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 is it going getting together a band? Is that something that started already or is it something you're going to yeah. be working on? Um, it's something that's both. So I've sort of started already, but I'm also working on it. Um, it's tricky to get a band together. Um, so hopefully it, it comes to pass because if it does, then there'll be gigs, you know, and it'd be awesome touring and uh, such. It, yeah. it, that will feel like the icing on the cake to what you're currently doing in regards to the music and what you've described coming up from the new album. Alex, mm. we must leave it there. Thank okay. you so much for taking the time to do this. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for? <laughs>